Hello and welcome to The Arise Interview, 60 glorious minutes of multifaceted discussion where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things and we feature the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anyagolu. Coming up in the next hour, back when people still played real musical instruments and television, not the internet, was king, bona fide Nigerian music legend, composer, producer, performer, inventor, multiple award winner, academic and philosopher, Professor Sir Victor Uwaifo, took the country, the continent and the world by storm with his own form of the African dance music known as High Life. He was and still is one of the true giants of Nigerian music in particular and African music in general, standing as a reminder of an age and a time in Nigeria's history that was full of creative hope. The incomparable Sir Victor Owaifo steps into the light in a moment. Now, there is hardly any conversation about the history of Nigerian and West African music that's worth having if it doesn't include a discussion about the veteran high-life musician, Professor Sir Victor Uwaifo, member of the Order of the Niger and Justice of the Peace, who towers over this country and this continent like no other. Sir Victor made his first recording in 1963, and before the decade was over, he had become not just a stellar performer, but a legend, receiving the first gold disc ever to be awarded to an African artist for his hit song, Jeremy. In the four decades since, he has remained a central and hugely influential figure in popular Nigerian music, with hit after brilliant hit, adding poetry, the teaching of sculpture, the running of an art gallery, the invention of a musical instrument, and the espousing of politics and philosophy to his long list of accomplishments, not to mention dishing out jurisprudence as a justice of the peace in his birthplace, Benin City. Well, in a moment, we'll speak to the guitar boy superstar himself. But first, I was very lucky indeed to briefly catch him in performance a few years ago at the Calabar Festival as he marked his 50th anniversary. Take a listen. Twenty-four hours later, one of Nigeria's most prolific and enduring musicians, Professor Sir Victor Uwaifo, is at the headline spot. Wifer has been doing it for 50 years, but each time his extraordinary showmanship seems to get stronger. His roaringly biting performance soon had the audience off their bleacher seats. Well, it's, uh, it's nostalgic and um, it's quite uh, rewarding to be here after celebrating 50 years of um, music on stage and uh, I'm still very much around. Peace, peace, peace. Now for more on the life and career of one of Nigeria's most celebrated musicians, I'm joined in the studio by the legendary Professor Sir Victor Owaifo. Absolutely, deliriously happy to have you here. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. And you don't remember that, do you? I, I now remember. You now remember yes, now that you've seen the, the, visual, visual. <laughs> the visual. Because I met you in Calabar. Yes. A few years ago, you were, you were the headline act yes. in that Calabar Festival that had everybody, including people from the UK and the US, and that, including... Um, Donald Duke was there. Donald, well, Donald Duke, there was, there was, uh, Donald Duke was there. There was uh, Lee Ali Moke, who was the governor. 
and, and a lot of other people. Yes. And uh, I managed to get behind the stage and managed to catch you and to convince you to sit down and do a quick chat with me. So for that, I'm eternally grateful. Bless you. And here we are again. How are you? I'm fine. And you too? Well, hanging in there, trying to see if we can make something more of what you've contributed to this country. And one of the things that stands out for you, obviously, it's not just the fact that you're a musician, you wear so many different hats. How is it that you've become so eclectic? Well, I, I believe my, one of my philosophies is that the best is yet to come. And uh, every achievement leads to the other. It's as if I'm not satisfied with what I already achieved. And um, I also have another philosophy. Don't waste my time. Mm. You know, I, I cannot stay idle. But at any point in time, I must keep moving. I, I like exploring mm. and, then to exp and to exploit new, explore areas and exploit what I have and uh, draw from the past to advance the future. So I, I keep going on and on until um, if I can get some satisfaction mm. from one thing. You see, music is one aspect. There are certain things you cannot express in music. You have to go into another field, mm. like the art. That is true. That will give me the full explanation for trying to unravel some um, things that are, you know, not too clear. It gives you a different language, is it? Completely. But, but the consistent yes. thing in your life, the thread that has run consistently and perhaps for which you're most recognized for and for which we're eternally grateful that you got into that area is music. Yes, but there's a trajectory. Mm. Don't forget that before I, I, took, I, I went into music f uh, f uh, fully, I was already a graduate from mm. Yamba College of Technology. That is true. I didn't study music there, but I studied art, graphic arts. So at the time, I gave it a break. Mm. When ma music now catapulted me into limelight, which I could not, you know, ignore. Mm. I had to um, go the music full length, full length, until a time I thought it was time to go and complete what I started earlier. And when you talk about being catapulted into the limelight, tell it to us from your perspective, because the rest of Nigeria, the rest of Africa, and indeed many parts of the world, see it from the point of view of the audience. Yes. Here's this legend up there playing his guitar, rocking the stage, brilliant music that's touching everybody's hips and hearts. But from your perspective, yes. what was it like? Well, in 1965, something had happened on the west coast of Africa that had never happened before. It's frenzy and persistent African rhythm. Mm. You know, seized all Negro souls, not south, east, and west of Africa. The, the song rode on the uh, dry Sahara airlines into Europe and air hostesses, you know, mahogany skinned air hostesses stepped into exotic nightclubs in Europe with a song on their lips mm. and with a dancing dance step to go with it. Every white boy struck tone deaf and beauty blind by racial prejudice. Mm asked with a glint in their eyes, what is this song that you sing and this dance step that you do? The inquirers always got the same answers. The song is Jeremy, <laughs> and the creator is Sir Victor Uwaifu. Mm. That a ama amazing song, I have to say. I mean, we will talk about all that um, as we make progress with this interview. but. 
you, you, you don't come across as the typical musician. I mean, we've already discussed that to an extent. You're a professor, you're a sculptor, you're a philosopher, you're a poet. You're the inventor of a musical instrument. You're a former commissioner of arts, culture, and tourism in Edo State, which is your state in the Midwest of Nigeria. That's not what you associate your average musician with. But then there was n never anything average about you, was there, as, as you correctly pointed out? Well, you know, if you look at the, the music uh, in Africa, in Nigeria, particularly in Nigeria, people who played, bef um, my predecessors mm. did well, but I found that there was still some loophole somewhere. You which took it to the next level to borrow a... <laughs> 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 to borrow a phrase from yes. someone who I won't mention, <laughs> you know. Um, but I mean, did you do all the things that m one imagines that musicians do? Because I mean, here you are, you're, a, you know, you're, as I said, you're a professor, philosopher. Poet. I mean, these are a lot of things that musicians are not associated with. Musicians tend to be associated with smoking and drinking and drugs and womanizing. Did, did you do all that? That's it. Things? I have never smoked in my life. Not that I smoked and I stopped. No. Mm. Cigarette had never touched my lips since I was born. No wonder you look so fresh. I don't know about that. Well, I, seriously, I, ser cigarette I, is a killer. And I don't drink. Mm. You don't drink alcohol at all? No, no, no. But nowadays, I can take some red wine right. when I'm eating. But I build up, I do a lot of exercises. For, don't forget, I was a school high jumper and I set up a high jump record still unbroken till this day. Well, you still got the athletic look, I have to <laughs> say. <laughs> but I mean, did, did, so, did, you, did, you, did you womanize? <laughs> Sorry, hate to put you on the spot there, but you know. <laughs> you know, an artist sees beauty in ugliness. <laughs> I like that. Yes. Okay, I'll accept so, that. <laughs> yes, but I did not go that far to, um, to, to uh, go into women Right. Or smoking or drinking. No, no uh, vices, uh, basically. Yes, no right. vices. But uh, well, let, let's talk about something that also has remained consistent with you, and that is your Afro hair. I mean, your hair is just absolutely perfect. Not, not, a, not, a, not a bit of it out of place. Okay. I mean, it reminds me of the Jacksons and people like that. Sort of, you know, uh, how, okay. how do you manage to I, I, I asked... Tony Amadi, <laughs> who, who contacted I mean, me. Did you take when he up asked all the me, windows in the car? Let and me tell you. Blow what around. I asked him, I said, Look, Tony, say yes. I said, Do you bath every day? He said, Yes. <laughs> Do you brush your teeth every day? He said, Yeah. Do you iron your, your clothes? Mm -hmm. You brush your shoes? So you take care of all these things. I said, Then take care of your hair, too. Good point. And of course, Tony Amadi is uh, another sort of legendary person who we're very honored to have on a, a, on, on a rise, working on a rise, because, I mean, he was one of the, um, the impresarios in those days yes. that were in contact with people like you and so many others. That's but right. Sir, Professor Sir Victor, please stay with us. You're watching The Arise Interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat with one of the true giants of Nigerian and African music, Professor Sir Victor Owaifo. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Arise Interview, where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anyegolu. Now, we're talking or taking a valuable look at the life and career of one of Nigeria's most talked about musicians, the legend that is Professor Sir Victor Owaifo, PhD, whose incredible music career spans many decades. After achieving fame across Nigeria and Africa and touring Europe and the US extensively in the 1960s and 70s, a new decade and a new location away from Lagos prompted a new musical direction. With his 12-piece band known as the Melody Maestros, which included the young musician Sonny Okosan, Sir Victor created a fresh 
rhythm-driven sound based on a traditional Benin coronation dance called Ekasa, launching it in 1971. What followed was a period of intense creativity during which Uwaifo blended ancient Benin fables, folklore, and chants with a very modern musical potpourri that had elements of Western soul, pop, and rock, and African rhythm held together by his own distinctive and dazzling virtuosity on the guitar. Take another listen to one of Sir Victor Uwaifo's monster hits. The professor of arts, multifarious talent, Sculptor, living legend, national treasure, genius, inventor, academician, intellectual, and maestro emeritus. Ladies and gentlemen, please sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And the brilliant Professor Sir Victor Uwaifo, PhD, is still with me in the studio. Thank you for staying with us. Is it fair to say that high life music is, in a sense, indigenous to all the people of West Africa, as E.T. Mensah, the father of high life, said? But it was simply lying dormant until the giants like yourself came along and developed it. Yeah. <clears throat> high life actually started from Ghana and then into Nigeria. Um, the name High Life was coined from a dance. You know, in, in those days, they, they were these um, colonial days, mm. you hardly uh, had bands that would play High Life because you have to play ballroom dancing walls, mm. quick step, foxtrot. In fact, you have to learn how to dance. But occasionally, in between, they would just chip in some of these songs, you know. And then most people who were not allowed to come into the ballroom hall mm. would shout after each dance. They would say, this boy, high life people, high life, they, they enjoy high life. Right, okay, these it, are the people living high, the high life, they, yes, as it were. Brilliant. That's how the name that's, was coined. That's a great revelation. Yes, sir. And, and the role of people like yourself was critical, wasn't it? Because you brought that particular modern sound, a sort of spirit of the age, using what was in effect a very sort of modern Western style on song to play African music. Yes. I actually developed my style of playing the guitar, mm. you know, especially from 
the old time gramophone record songs in those days. From uh, the things you, have GV, to wind yeah, you had to wind the gramophone. <laughs> they would title GV, mm. one, two, three, and so on and so forth. I'll play one of those songs today, you know, sure, La Paloma, brilliant. you know. And uh, I thought, the, you know the sign of the gramophone, his master's voice? Yes, absolutely. It's a megaphone with, with a dog, dog. Sort of, yeah. As that early age, as young as I was, as, you know, before, uh, before 12, mm. I thought the dog was actually singing inside the gramophone. <laughs> God, that was it. <laughs> a bit like people who used to think there were little people inside a television inside the set. <laughs> so, and <clears throat> I got inspired by some of those songs mm. that I know. And I thought, no, I should be able to play the kind of guitar that people were playing. So I made a guitar for myself from with plywood, mm. trap strings for strings, and bicycle spokes for. Yes, I remember, I remember hearing you talk about that. Yes. Sir. Bicycle spokes. Yes. Sir. Amazing. That's how I started. And I developed it. Developed it until I was able to buy the real Spanish mm. guitar. And, and Nigeria at that time was in the throes of sort of the Nigerianization and Africanization of the colonial legacy when your music exploded onto the scene immediately after independence. Um, do you think that was partly why it was picked up by everybody in Nigeria and across Africa? Because your music fit, it fit the political and social mood and exuberance and hope of that era. I think I wasn't actually playing music to become a musician. Mm. I was playing music because of the love I had for music. What I derived from it, it gave me satisfaction, gave me feelings. And what I did was I was just trying to um, give the best of my mind. And so if, if somebody sold a million, mm. which means you have interpreted a million people's mind at the same time. Yes. Yes. So. I mean, you were able to get them get to coalesce. Yes, at the same time. Yeah. So I thought there was something missing also in the straight jacket, high life mm. sound. Then I wanted to give it uh, a different color. Guitarists were just sitting on the, at the background those mm. days. But I thought, I said, no, why should a trumpeter be a band leader? Yes. Or a saxophonist be a band leader? Guitar can play chord. Guitar is a, is a polyphonic instrument. Mm. It's not monophonic. Mm. It's like a, a piano also. But the piano has 172 strings. Guitar has six strings. Yes. You can do exactly what the piano does if you know how to play yes. the guitar. So I... I I played the guitar the way I wanted it to sound, and it obeyed me. So I stood up to play the guitar and danced. So because I do not belong to the background, mm. sitting at the background and playing the instruments, that was how I developed it. And, and of course, it's not the only instrument you play. Oh no, I play several instruments. Once you're able to read and write music, mm. you can play. I play flute, I play saxophone, I play xylophone, I play clarinet, I play baritone sax, and uh, some percussions. I, you know, I do it. So, so it, it, it is fair to say that you're not just a musician. You're actually a musicologist, if, if it's fair to say that. If there's another word beyond mm. musicologist, fine, yes. But, but just, we, we haven't got that much time left in this particular segment. Obviously, okay. we'll come back. Okay. But, just briefly, how did you get into music in the first place and then subsequently decided to turn that into a career? Music runs in the blood. Mm. And it also runs in the family, but everyone had his own profession. Yeah, but you see, everybody wants to play music. I mean, I want to play music. A lot of people here love to play music. That's why they enjoy it. But they never get the chance to make that decision that I'm going to pursue it and see it through as a career. You must have a vision, mm. a focus, and know where you are going. And we, you see, if, if a man can use axioms 
to project geometric structures mm. of the world, then man can also use esoteric axioms to project the invisible structure of the intangible world. Now I know you're a philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I said earlier, I hear what people don't hear. I can, I can in art also, I see what people don't see. Mm. You can see uh, an object crying to be brought out and, and until I bring it out and give it form and shape, I will not rest. So I pursue it until I get what I want. So. I am able to balance sound. Okay, that brings to mind. Mm -hmm. You know, I created colors and sound when I was in the Yaba College, the graphic, uh, doing graphic. I was able to represent musical notes with colors. Red, do, black, re, blue, me. Do, do, do. Fa, <laughs> so, if you draw a chord of colors, you can strike it. That brought the aquatic rhythm. That was how I discovered aquatic That's amazing. Rhythm. Yes. That is amazing. And that's a visualization that's it. of what is going on inside your head. That's astonishing. Stay with us. We're going to talk some more. And hopefully, we're going to see you play live for us the guitar. You're watching The Arise Interview, plenty more still ahead as we continue our glimpse into the life and career of the legendary music maestro, Professor Sir Victor Owaifo, PhD. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Arise Interview, where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anyegolu. Now, for anyone interested in African music that's emerged in the last half century or so, the works of the great musician, Professor Sir Victor Owaifo, PhD, have to be an essential part of that compendium. His music showcases a guitarist of astonishing inventiveness, a performer with seemingly limitless energy and drive, and an artist with an enviable technique and an all-encompassing musical sensibility that has managed to to successfully inject itself into the hearts and hips of millions of fans. Well, in a moment, we'll hear more about the life and career of Professor Sir Victor Owaifo from the man himself. But first, here's a bit more of the great man doing what he does best, and he's doing it right here in the Arise News studios. Sir Victor Owaifo playing his guitar for our audience. Over yeah. to you, sir. Yes, as I said, this song is called La Paloma from the GV records uh, it sounds like this take it away Do 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 
Paloma. Absolutely brilliant. Which one is this one? It got a 26, 26. Okay. And I wonder if I can be talking to you. I mean, are you able to talk and play or shall we talk a bit more? The, re the reason is that, I mean, I, it, I was going to ask you, is the guitar a difficult instrument to play? Did, did it? I mean, do you form a lot of blisters on your fingers and all that? Sort yes. Of? In the first um, maybe five years, you get a corn at the tip of your finger. And then your fingers get used yes, to it. Yes, gets used to it. It's so smooth like the baby's fingers now. So. Right. And then uh, guitar, <laughs> I think it's one of the most difficult instruments. The violin is another one. Yeah, violin is tough, isn't it? I, I can play a little bit on the piano, but then it's uh, not as complicated as the guitar, I imagine. Yes, because the guitar, only six strings, mm. can play what a symphony can play. Just something like a Jesu Joy mm. of Mount Tizari. But of course, it requires a lot of dexterity. Yes. In your part. It's so lovely. And, and, and do you prefer the acoustic guitar to the electric guitar? Is it easier? It depends on the kind of music you want to play. Right. Because if it's on stage, the electric, the electric is obviously better. more effective. is so spiritually uplifting I have to say and I was going to ask you the first song you played uh, I can't remember what the name is but it kind of reminds me of my mother because she, she likes that song quite a bit yeah what's that the very first song you played it reminded me of a Caribbean island sort of lying somewhere and sipping pina coladas it was the very first song that you played good okay, that's uh, a that La Paloma. Yeah, La Paloma, yes. I think. That, it had that very sort of Spanish, you yes. know what I mean, like somewhere in Marbella in That's the south right. of Spain or yes. something, uh, relaxing. I mean, who, who were your great musical influences? L let me ask you that. I didn't know them. They were, they were just GV people. They were right. called the GV, gramophone people. But were there any particular people that, that you got to know as you, you got older and got more into music yourself? and that became a strong sort of influence, strong inspiration for, for what would eventually be your musical I, I don't think so, because you would have probably have mm. seen most of your head. They, I would have sounded like them if I uh, had any inspiration from, mm. but generally I like good music. If it, it sounds good, it doesn't really matter who it, it, you know, is. it strikes me, yes. Right, and, and let, let's talk about your life growing up. I mean, where were you born and wh where were you brought up? Benin City. I was born in Benin City, brought up there. Went to primary school there, two primary schools, Benin um, Holy Cross uh, Primary School and right. Benin Baptist. So it was like a then, Catholic education. Yes. Sort of. And then Western Boys High School and St. Gregory's College, Lagos. Then from there I grew up 
I took up, uh, went into music completely on my own. Mm. And I made a U-turn after I had achieved the uh, highest peak of my career. I went back to school. This time Re nobody put a gun to your head and no. said, <laughs> no, go no. to school. You did it on your it's own. So nice. sort of thing. Right. At 52, I had gone back to school, mm. you have, um, University of Benin. And I uh, to read sculpture. Yeah, you graduated with first class honors. You are right, yeah. and that was very rare. I didn't, I didn't bargain for it, but it mm. just it just happened, and I became the valedictorian. I read the, read the speech on behalf of the rest. Uh, well, if I was running the university, yeah. I'd make you the valedictorian. <laughs> 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 I mean, then I th I thought that was that all that I was now. Uh, I did, uh, I went into, uh, I did my master's degree. Mm. And the vice chancellor thought he couldn't just allow me to go like that. So he employed me uh, and uh, to teach in the university. And because one, if you make a first class honors, mm. they think you have material. Yes, of course. So I taught for 15 years and within which time I saw went for it, I said, I cannot stop at master's mm. degree. And I did my PhD. Amazing. Yes. And, and, and when you were growing up, I mean, I, I imagine it was a very different world. It was the colonial era in Nigeria. Most people, many, many people have no idea what it was like to grow up in the colonial era. But, I mean, but also, yes. Benin culture was famous all around the world. The arts, the, the sculpture, all of that. Um, and, but also, there were some fairly scary stories that used to be told about the Benin of those days, and the fact that you know, human heads had to be buried with the obers of Benin, and so on and so forth. I, is that a fact? I have never seen it anywhere in history where human heads are buried with the obber. But I know for sure, I have a museum, which I call uh, Revelation uh, Palazzo mm -hmm. Museum. You can see all the history from the, um, you know, dating back so many centuries mm -hmm. back to this day. But I know that there are, there are sacrifices if rain rain uh, too much and uh, they, they sacrifice a human being to appease the gods, and if it well, did that happen when you were a child, or, or was that before? No, your time? before, before my right. time, before my long, long before my time. And if the sun is too much, they were to sacrifice somebody. Right, it's like you okay, know. come here, let's cut your head off and hope the sun goes down. <laughs> and if a chief misbehaves and uh, and it's not in the good books, everybody would pronounce him. The, to go and hang, and he would go and hang himself. Really? So yes. it was a sort of Japanese harakiri sort of thing. You know, like the Japanese yeah. would, you know, um, they, they would kill themselves if they, they, they felt okay. that they, they disgraced, you know, themselves they, or their family or that's something. Right. It, it was something related to yeah. that. So the Oba was very powerful, and it's still powerful this day. And it's believed to be a successor of the forefathers, mm. you know, the Benin uh, is, is, a, is a primogeniture uh, uh, type style of uh, inheritance. Mm. You know? And uh, in fact, if you make an artwork, an artwork is normally an artwork as far as the artist is concerned. Mm. But when you begin to uh, put some, uh, you, you build some spiritual things into, I, into mm. it. It's no more an artwork. It becomes something that will, um, that, that is spiritual. Right. You know, yes. Sir. Well, let me ask you to hold that thought there. You're watching The Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead we, as we continue our chat with one of the true giants of Nigerian and African music, Professor Victor Owaifo, PhD. Stay with us. 
Welcome back to the Arise interview where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anir Golu. Now from the 1960s to the 1970s, the 80s and through to today. The musical influence of Professor Sir Victor Owaifo, PhD, has spanned many decades. When it first came out, his music caught on like wildfire throughout Nigeria and soon spread to other African countries and many parts of the world, influencing everyone from the likes of the famous international world music band Osibisa to the Afrobeat legend Fela Kuti pioneering the Africanized cross-fingering guitar technique and fusing it with the traditional music of the people of Benin in Nigeria's Midwest, a combination that created a more rootsy style of high life. Well, in a moment, we'll hear more from the genius himself, Sir Victor Owaifa. But first, here's some more of the unique musical style that brought him national and international fame in this video. All my solos are based on something. I don't just play solo, just not because I'm rapping out on that's that's a little bit of jazz. So my songs, my solos, my really are well coordinated. Mm -hmm. It's not a guesswork. Yeah. Okay. Let me Great Professor Sir Victor Owaifa, PhD, is with me in the studio and pick it up from there with your guitar yeah. in the studio. Guitar boy. <laughs> Mami Watao If you see Mami Watao Never, never you run away Eh Eh Never run away with the wife If you see Mami Watao If you see Mami Watao Never, never you run away. Eh, eh. Sing that song of love, sweet melody. Yeah. <laughs> And of course, I'm going to ask you the obvious question that a lot of people ask musicians. I mean, did you, did you make lots of money from your tours and selling all those records and then you blew all, all of that sort of thing? Or did you spend a lot of time counting your money every day? Well, I have invested a lot. It will show what I have made from mm. music. If you come to Benin, I have an empire. Yes, I've seen some of the, the buildings yes. and things, yeah. And then I'm an employer of labor. Mm. So I advise anybody who's making money from music, like all these young stars, they say, let them invest, employ people, create jobs. That's a very good a piece of advice. Yes. Create wealth. Make exactly. wealth to create wealth. That's it. And of course, you were... Um, as you were revolutionizing the music scene, uh, 60s and so on, Politically, Nigeria was going through its own ethnically charged revolution or conflict as the Western region was exploding, the first military coup was taking place, and suddenly Nigeria was at war with itself. I mean, how did that fit into your life? I had never seen war before. So at that time, it was strange. Mm. And um, I, I just, I was still very young too. You know, uh, because uh, 
The Nigerian Civil War, when mm. it broke out, it took everybody by, by surprise. Mm. And, uh, and where were you during the, the war? Were I was in Lagos. Lagos right? I was in Thank Lagos. You. And I have fans all over Nigeria and West Africa and Africa. But that, in fact, I just left the east, mm. just crossed the, the bridge when the following, the following day when the war broke out, you know. And I was also the first to visit the east when it ended, you know. But music suits the mind, music suits the soul, music heals wounds. And, and would you say that that music, that high life that you played became the soundtrack of the ordinary Nigerian who was to some extent bewildered by what was happening politically all around the country? Yeah, it, it well, you know, as I said, and I keep saying it, that music has no enemy. Mm. <laughs> music is uh, a spiritual mm. also, and it, if you are in a, a sad mood, it would lift you up. Yes. Right. That but but were, were you well. yourself political? I mean, you studied politics, political philosophy, but, but were you political even if you were not directly involved in party politics, in, in that party politics of those days? W would you say you were political? Was that ever reflected in your music? Yeah, I did, I did some, like uh, Mr. Austerity, mm. Get Out of the Streets. That was quite political. I was and, talking and about, uh, you know, we are going to drive you out of the uh, place, far, far away, you know. Was that around the austerity, austerity. of the 1980s? Uh, exactly. The sort of the military austerity. <laughs> yes, so it was. And, and, and were the politicians, did they use you and your music, I mean, for political rallies? No, or no, 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 no. I wouldn't even, you know, uh, make myself available for that. No, but no one can use me or... Mm. You know, uh, change my my concept of focus. I was more concerned with music and music for music for music's sake. Right. Well, uh, let's focus on that then. Beyond the politicians and the ordinary sort of man on the woman on the street, because obviously you had a lot of fans, um, including politicians. Um, how much influence would you say that you have had? on musicians in Nigeria, in West Africa, and beyond. Now that brings to mind, this guitar I'm playing now, mm. it was brought to me because I didn't bring guitar from Benin. It came to pay me a visit. It's right in Abuja now. Right. It's a, it, it's a chancellor of a university. It's a professor, also Jewish doctor, has a PhD, and it's a, it's a, a, a he creates, uh, he, also, um, he also lectures you know, uh, law mm. you know, in the university. His name is Tony Bestman Ogiame. He was my guitarist after Sonia Kosun. Wow. Tony Kosun was also my second. Because Sonia Kosun, a big Lord name who yes. passed away. So these are some few names that I influenced. And if, at least those are the ones you know, because there are millions of others that you no, don't. I am a music school, and most of all these boys. Mm. There. Have you heard of Ebony Band? Ebony. Right. That's my student from my school. Then uh, the Vintage Band in mm. Lagos. Uh, Baba 2010 in Abuja here. Those are my students. From well, Victor Wefa, if you don't Academy. mind, c can I be your student as well? <laughs> you are already my student. <laughs> I like that. I would be honored to have you as my mentor. And in fact, you are my mentor anyway. But what, let me ask you a cliched question. You've already mentioned uh, the fact that you would advise a lot of young musicians today to invest. Yes. What else would you advise them to do? To study music properly and forget about computer. Because it's not doing them any good. Mm. You don't know music, but you play music. And you cannot perform. You know, it's a, it's a big problem. You know, in the beginning, when it started in those days, they used to say, DJ, give me track this, and they would mime mm. to it. You know, that has, you know, given way now. But to be able to play to sustain that musicianship or the career, the profession, 
I have been there for almost 60 years now mm. on stage, and I'm still relevant. Absolutely. So these boys, if they can hold sway for 10, 20 years, 30 years, then I know that probably the uh, uh, nature or, or posterity has already is also you know shining, showing the, uh, the grace, giving them mm. so, so much grace. Because if you don't understand music properly, there is no way you can you can you can sustain the the fame because you are not using the same type of people every day. Well, absolutely, and that is a very good piece of advice to end on, Professor Sir Doctor Victor Owaifo, PhD. Very honoured to have you here. Thank you very much indeed. And me too. Thank Bless you. Sir. Well, that's it for this edition of The Arise Interview. Join us again for a fresh edition tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.